Well, good morning, guys. Welcome to Marina de Carrara in Italy. So why are we here today? You can probably already see over my shoulder here, big yacht. And that is motor yacht Shahrazad. And this vessel has been in the shipyard here for about six months, been in refit. Um, and it was, according to the press, in the last few days, it was trying to leave and uh, the, uh, the Italian authorities put a stop to that and the vessel is now arrested and sitting here in, in the shipyard, in the Italian Sea Group shipyard where it's been in refit for the last six months. So the story goes in the press is that the, the vessel was getting ready to leave and they were, they were fueling the vessel, that the, the, the vessel had been refloated because it's been in dry dock and uh, they were fueling the vessel, they were loading it with fresh water, etc, etc, and uh, made it look like it was, uh, it was about to do a runner and, uh, and escape uh, the West and, and head back to Russia. I mean, the, the real story is a little bit different, I suppose. Um, obviously, the vessel has to get permission to leave. It can't just leave on it of its own accord. Um, so uh, it would have been would have been after ha ask and be granted permission to sail before it before it did so. So anyway, the vessel is now arrested here and it's going to be here for the foreseeable future because uh, this vessel, Project Lightning, as it was known, and Project Thunder, which is Motia Crescent, which we looked at in a recent video, and obviously Project Thunder and Project Lightning, Thunder and Lightning. There's obviously a connection between these two vessels. And you know they are widely accepted to be uh, connected to Vladimir Putin via proxy owners. In this particular vessel, that they're, they're referencing, referencing the name Edward Kutenetov, who we've we've talked about in recent videos about Amadea. And the reason why they're using his name, well, one of the reasons why they're using his name is because he's he's a, he's a, a Russian businessman who's a wealthy Russian businessman, and he's not under any sanctions right now. But even though this Putinitov is not under any sanctions, the Italians have said, no, this vessel is not going anywhere. We're arresting this vessel for now. So a little bit about this vessel, built by Lursen, of course, because all the big boats like this are built by Lursen. Uh, it, uh, it was delivered in 2020. It was allegedly purchased in 2015. In other words, the the order went in 2015, so it took five years to build this vessel, which is about normal for a vessel of this size. It's uh, 140 meters in length, or 459 feet in length, uh, and, it, and it's, it has a gross tonnage of 10,100 gross tons, which is quite incredible. I mean, the fact that a 140 meter vessel is only number 14 on the list, but it is number 14 on a very big list of super yachts and uh, it is quite an incredible thing to see but as you can see very similar look to uh, crescent even though this one is white and the other one is black i mean it's it's, it's the opposites uh, thunder and lightning black white uh, thunder is black lightning is white i mean you know come on so to add some scale to this footage that you're seeing here the vessel in front, the yacht in front, that is a 62 meter vessel called Life Saga. Now, it, it, Shahrazad is so huge that it makes that look almost like a, a tender, doesn't it? It's, it's incredible, the, the scale of, of this vessel, Shahrazad, it's, it's such a huge vessel. There are not many super yachts that you'll see on the ocean that will be larger than this. And I would say that even if this vessel was next to the likes of Eclipse, and um, Assam, that it will still look just as massive as it does here. But you can see the similarities in the two vessels. They're clearly sister ships. The names, the project names and stuff aside, you can clearly see the similarities between the two vessels. Obviously, the color difference also, but if you look at the windows on the side of the vessel uh, and the, the antenna domes, the, the location of the antenna domes, the, funnel, the funnels, um, 
there's a lot of uh, data there that shows you that these vessels are very similar and no doubt were designed by the same person. Now, why would you want two vessels of this size? That is a good question. Um, why not is the answer, right? If you've got the money, uh, regardless of who owns them. And also I spoke to uh, somebody who worked on the vessel when it, was, when it was being built. And when they came out of the shipyard, they were told that they had to do handover notes for the other crew, right? Now, having two completely independent crews that don't hand over to each other. I mean, first of all, having two independent crews is unheard of. Uh, secondly, the idea that one crew is going to come on in one complete go and then the other crew is going to leave in, in one complete go is unheard of too. Right? On many super yachts, you'll have people who are on full rotation, so meaning that they'll have an opposite. The opposite is on leave when you're on board and then when you go on leave, you hand over to your opposite who arrives back on board. Right Now, there are, I would say, probably like maybe... 40% of the crew are on a full rotation, meaning they have a one-for-one one opposite. And when they hand over, it's all staggered, right? No, but you don't have like 40 people arrive on the vessel and say, right, we're, we're, we're taking over now. Uh, it's, it's done, it's staggered. So, you know, one, you'll have like a couple of people arriving each week. So the idea that there's going to be one incomplete crew that come on is it's just, it's, it's unheard of. And the idea that they're going to come on and not have a handover from the off-going crew that's also crazy but it goes even further than that the person told me that when they uh, were doing uh, when they were on board they had to make videos of how to launch a tender how to hang the the the, um, the fenders they had to make videos in English of the procedures of how to do things and they said that the pe the person who told them they had to do this said that they would later they would add Russian subtitles to the videos so that the, the crew who were coming on could be, would, would be able to do what they were doing. Which also means that if you have to do a step-by-step -step procedure on a video of how to launch a tender, that means the person that's watching it has never launched the tender, right? If you're a professional seafarer, if you're a professional deckhand, you've got experience on sea piots, you know how to launch a tender. You don't need to watch a video on how to launch a tender. So. That goes towards what uh, Navalny's team said, is that the, the, the people that working on board were not actually seafaring professionals, but members of a security uh, that were also doubling as those positions. What's the future for these vessels? I, I don't know. It's, we're in uncharted territory, really. I can't, imagine, I can't imagine these vessels ever, you know, sailing the Mediterranean again, um, because I just don't think at least for the next couple of years, at least as long as what's going on in Ukraine, the war, the invasion of Ukraine, as long as that's going on, I can't imagine there are many countries, certainly in Europe, that will be happy to see these things anchored off their coast. So yeah, it's, a, it's uncharted territory. Uh, I don't know what that means for the crews. I suspect that eventually these, these might be crewed by non-European crew. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very strange situation. One of the things that they do, uh, I'm sure you're aware, around, uh, around areas where close to the sea is they build these um, seawalls, artificial reef uh, seawall sea wall to prevent the sea from eroding the land back into the sea. But what's interesting about this place, and if you, if you are into this kind of thing, you might already have known when you heard the name Carrara, but there is a, there is a marble, a very famous marble, that was mined in Carrara, which is this here, in, in the mountains of Carrara, which is in the background to where I'm standing right now. But, and I'm, I'm not, by no means am I an expert, but I believe this is raw marble. And this has been used as, uh, to create a seawall uh, around, around this area. And there's so much of it here that they can do this with it. But I mean, this does look to me like, like raw marble. So anyway guys, if you like this video, uh, be sure to like it, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you get notifications of future videos. Let me know what you think of the boat guys. I mean, it is a beautiful boat. I, I expect nothing less from Lurson. Uh, they knocked it out of the park again. Um, and uh, the same with Crescent. I mean, I didn't really mention in the Crescent video, but they are stunning vessels. I was just uh, preoccupied with uh, the subject really, subject matter. All right, guys, uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch up with you soon.